Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our latest episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel. We really need the growth. We're trying to make it big. So uh, hope to see you next episode. We got some great stuff planned. Tune in. Thanks. Well, we were saying before, Ben might have the most various cars and coffee entries. Like oh, of all time. Oh, 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 like people yeah. bring great cars and there's collectors, you know, there's been an F40, which was awesome, and that, that same owner has a Senna, and that's great, yeah. but yeah. no one has brought a Unimog and a 442. <laughs> and then a bus. And a motorcycle. Oh, the bus was hilarious. Oh, you brought a bus? <laughs>
we all know about each other's so hordes. You're, just, you're, you're controlled hoarders, if you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> controlled sure. could be, yeah. yeah controlled. We buy That's... junk cars. <laughs> well, you know, it's, you'd, be, you'd be amazed what you get called for. I mean, my, one of my really good friends is Theophanos Orphanos, and he is a picture car coordinator, and he was my right hand on Nosferatu season one and season two. And that's where I got the 1938 Rolls Royce, which I donated to the museum yeah, last year. Yeah. And uh, Park Ward body, uh, serial number WXA61, I believe. <laughs> um, you know, and Theo, Theo just did a great movie with Tommy Lee Jones in New Bedford, and the hero car were two Mark IV uh, Golfs. You know, it's stuff like that. It's always good. To, you got to have one of the things about the movies that you don't a lot of people don't realize is you always have to have a double for the car. Right. Never put all your eggs in one basket because cars will go wrong. I mean, it's one of the I mean, a million things can go wrong at any given moment for any reason whatsoever. Anything from bad fuel to suicidal pigeon, you know. Uh, okay, you know, you gotta it's, tell that. We'll get it. I mean, a pigeon flew into the windshield, cracked the windshield. But if you cracked the windshield of the hero car, yeah, you can't shoot with that yeah, car for the day. You have to replace yeah. the windshield, uh, and then you have to get tent-free windshields, which is a whole different thing. And non-polarized windshields, you have to have non-polarized glass for the camera department. Not so anyone can do this job. No, it, it's complicated. I mean, I would imagine there would be. Far higher numbers at Looney Bins yeah. if uh, you know <laughs> so I have a more people tried to yeah, get into so, picture cars. You know, the three of us, we we all or four of us were all car people growing up, and I think we all had our ideal job, and we all wanted to be involved in cars, yeah. and we envisioned it, and here we are. We ended up one way or another yeah. working with cars. How did you end up in the motion like motion picture side of things? How totally by accident. Yeah, so how did that come to fruition? I, you know, I, I've, uh, I've always been a collector. Yeah. Uh, or hoarder, whatever. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, I remember getting a call, this is probably close to 11 years ago now, it was for a movie called Infinitely Polar Bear. And it had, uh, it had uh, Zoe Saladonna, and uh, uh, the gentleman who was the Hulk, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. A Antonio Maligari. Not even close. No. Mark Ruffalo? Yes, Mark yeah. Ruffalo. Okay. Mark Ruffalo was in. And they just, told, they just asked me, they were doing a period show and they needed period cars and mm -hmm. would I be interested in getting involved? And I said, sure. Yeah. And I just kept bringing them cars and bringing them cars. And then I joined the union. They basically said, do you want to do this for a job? You can join the union and be a picture car coordinator. And that's literally how it went. But, wow. uh, you know, that was the better part of a decade ago, which is, you know, it's amazing how fast that flies by. But, you know, it's it's been, uh, that was, I remember the hero car we had on that was a Citroen, it was a 71 DS wagon. And the oh, suspension wagon. actually worked. What? You could adjust the suspension the all the way up. Suspension. That's cool. The hydraulic really suspension cool. actually worked. Well, you definitely need a double in that movie because of that. I didn't have double. Back then, <laughs> well, I didn't know any better. Uh, I, just, I didn't have a double on that one, but I, my God, we could have needed it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, no the offense to the French car guys. Yeah. yeah. So what's like the best car story that you have on set? I remember you were telling me earlier about um, Doc from Back to the Future. You were, did a movie with him. Well, I had the great pleasure of working for Theo, uh, Theo Orfanos, and he did a movie called Tender Bar with Ben Affleck and uh, a lot of other wonderful actors and actresses in that. And uh, there was a scene uh, where Christopher Lloyd had to drive in with the child actor in the car, uh, pull into the driveway, park, put it in park, get out and walk into the house. And, uh, you, you know, I, I went over and I talked to the first, the first AD, who's the first assistant director. And they said, all right, we should do a couple of practice runs, you know, with uh, Mr. Lloyd in the car, just because yeah. he's got to get a feel for it. There's no yeah. power system brakes. Mm -hmm. I think it was a 67 Ford station wagon. Was it a country squire or something like that? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
all original car, absolutely wonderful condition, but it didn't have power assisted brakes. It was just pure mechanical, yeah. mm -hmm. mechanical brakes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lloyd's getting on in his years. Uh, you know, and certainly did an awesome job of it. But so anyway, I went around the block with him a couple of times. And this is at peak COVID. So everybody's in a panic. Oh my God, you gotta wear masks, gloves, eye protection, face shields, everything. I, so I'm, the face I, I'm basically in a hazmat suit <laughs> in the car next to Doc. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking over and he's still got the white hair. And <laughs> he, cool. he just looks the part and he's wearing a suit and a tie, and I'm just real thinking to myself, "This is it, man. This is this is awesome." Like, I, Back to the Future <laughs> to me was a huge deal. Yeah, like, yeah. I, you yeah. know, that was a huge deal. Yeah. And it was uh, so we we just started talking, and he's telling me about uh, he's telling me all the stories about shooting Back to the Future and how the that yellow Packard that he had, I think it was a Packard Caribbean convertible or something along those lines. But anyway, in, there was one scene where he was coming in to do a shot and he accidentally hit the camera and knocked the camera over. <laughs> and I'm just like, Christopher Lloyd is telling me stories about crashing on Back to the Future. Like this doesn't get any better. Like yeah. this is great, you know, for somebody in my in my line of work, this is fantastic. It's just it was it was absolutely wonderful. He was wonderful to deal with, very polite. Great, cool. you know, very great. We had a great cast. Ben's awesome to work with. I've worked with Ben Affleck on a bunch of different occasions. And he's another great guy to work with. We got a lot of really great local guys. It's, awesome. really, it's actually a lot of fun. How did Christopher Lloyd drive? Did he hit Brilliantly. 88 miles an hour? He did not hit 88 <laughs> miles per hour, yeah, but yeah. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was going to, because you always have to remain professional. Yeah. So the entire time I'm sitting there and I'm just... Dad. I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing it in my mind. I can see the flux capacitor in the back seat. This is, and I just, You're I like just Trent, thinking about what you shouldn't say, but you want to say exactly, so like, yeah. say exactly. And uh, Hi, well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a funny story. Is actually, I did uh, on Nosferatu, season one. I worked with Zachary Quinto, mm -hmm. who played Spock on Star Trek, yep. and mm -hmm. I love. I, I do love me some Star Trek. I, I, I don't know why I, I just I he was just, a Star Trek guy. Oh, I love me some Star Trek. I don't know Trek. if it's the mutton chop. And or... I waited all year. I waited to the rap party. Yeah. I waited till after the last day of shooting when we were all together at the rap party. And I went up to Zach and I'm like, Zach, I have waited all <laughs> year to do this. But you are amazing as Spock and live long and prosper. <laughs> and he gave me a hug right there. It was just like, oh, man, you're amazing. And this is just like... I, because you have to remain professional. You, just, yeah, you know, yeah, you you yeah. can't you we, yeah. you know you can't bring up other characters from sure. other franchises. Yeah. Obviously, if they're in character and they're trying to be, you know, yeah, yeah, they're doing the best job. You know, they're doing a great job. You don't want to mess it up. Yeah, you don't want to mess that up. Like that. Yeah. No. Oh man, I waited all year to do that. <laughs> I waited all year to do that, and I'll tell you, that was a beautiful <laughs> live long and prosper right there. Well, it's, it's, it, that's a great great story, and you got a lot of stories which is why I know, we're here yeah. today but it's it's things like that that are so interesting to me because there's so many like opportunities like in the car world like yeah. i've said like in the museum or anything like that absolutely how how does a young person get to the point where they can be at some point telling these type of stories like what path you know do you see someone going down just to get involved with something similar to a museum or in the, a movie car. I was going to say, you know, it's don't be afraid to go out there and meet people and shake hands and yeah. introduce yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and just get out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to it's it's all about networking. It's all about, you know, you know, any job worth doing is worth doing right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you got to get into it and you got to you got to be dedicated. Now, I'll tell you, it's. You know, in, in you know, people that want to get in the movie industry, for the love of God, don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it will it will take years off yeah. your life. But if you're really dedicated in to doing it, there's a lot of different yeah. ways. I mean, uh, I it, it all depends what you want to do. Right. You know, and right. if you don't know what you want to do, sign up to be a PA, and yep. you, you're going to be exposed to ev absolutely yep. everything. It's not easy work, um, 
but you know you'll be exposed to everything you're going to taste for everything yeah. i mean i've got a lot of my friends you know a lot of the friends that i've worked with in the industry and now assistant directors that were uh you know they're now second seconds and yep. you know they're work they got their books into the dga uh and they, they they're doing absolutely brilliantly from themselves and i got another a lot of friends that started off as pas and now yep. uh, you know uh, you know they're uh, my buddy Allie Furlong, she started off as a PA, and now she's, uh, you know, she's going to be a prop master, and she's absolutely kicking ass at it, and there's yeah. a lot of people out there. You just got to work that, your way up. Exactly. You got to, there's so many different, pe people don't realize what it takes to make a show. It's, right. it's everything. Well, it's the same. I mean, it's, it's absolutely it, everything. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the same thing what we do. I don't think people understand what it takes. Yeah. Like, oh, to, do, yeah. to do our yeah. job, and, you know, the word dedicated to us, I mean, we're, you know, we work hard to make sure we give a good experience, you know, to our guests and to our visitors that are in the museum. And, you know, it's networking that brought you to us, just like reaching out. But it's being so dedicated uh, on your end that got you to work on our boat car. Yeah. And you were, that was dedication, <laughs> my friend. You yeah, got to tell us about that yeah, whole thing. So dedica if you, if you haven't seen our land insanity. yacht show, we've got... 50s and 60s land yachts in the museum right now, the biggest cars in American history. We were donated from the Peterson Museum a boat car, which was created by artist Pippa Gardner. It's got a helm on top of a 68 Buick Riviera with steering linkages that cut straight through the cabin. And essentially, we quickly found out if the car's not running, the car won't steer. So we can't get it in the museum. And that's where Ben comes in. So we tapped Ben in to work on this boat car. Can you tell us how that went? Well, it's uh, it's a really cool piece, and uh, it, it's it's a really cool piece, and it's got a you know we we were able to sort it out. You know, the car had been we're not entirely sure when the car was last on the road. Mm -hmm. It's we know that it was driven in 1987. Mm -hmm. We're not aware of it being we're not aware of it being driven after that. Right. So everything. The car was very much asleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, this car was put into hibernation. And that's really the way you have to look at it. When you're freshening up an old car that's been sitting for a long period of time, there's a standard procedure of how you go through all these things. What made it complicated was, as a car, it, it, it's, it's very interesting to have a car that is both a car and art. Right. And an art installation. So you can't change or alter the artist's... Yeah. Y y vision. Yeah, you can't change true. their vision. You don't want it. And I think it's fantastic. So you don't want to do anything to change that. But you need the car to function and you need it to, f it to function safely. And in yeah. today's world, you know, I'm, you know, in today's world, you, you know, it's, it's got to function safely. Yeah. Uh, so it was complicated, but there was nothing, I wouldn't say there was anything catastrophic about it. It was just the standard procedure of once you you start in one place and you slowly work your way towards running and driving and everything right. will break along the way well, and that's simply uh, what happened and we had a I mean, very we had a very specific uh requirement for this car we had to be able to start it drive it into the museum and steer it into place it had to be yes. basically running for what 10 minutes yes or else it would overheat well, yeah, the water pump's been, uh, yeah, the water pump's uh, still is, uh, in hibernation. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. still in the process of waking up. Yeah. Well, the other problem is, too, is you have to get correct parts for something that's 1968. Mm -hmm. And that's not impossible to do, but you always get, you, you know, and because it's a California car, it's an air conditioning car, so it's slightly, there's a few things on it that are just annoyingly different enough mm -hmm. to where it won't fit. You know, we, had, we went through like three or four fuel pumps before we actually got to the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, rebuilding a Rochester Quadrant carburetor. Not the most difficult carburetor in the world to do. Still not fun to do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's all the vacuum lines. And it's, you know, it's, you know, the fuel, the entire fuel system. Because there's a trailer hitch on that car, which is welded to the chassis. <laughs> so you can't take the gas tank out. So you can't get the gas, you can't yeah. take the gas tank out to flush the gas tank to put it back in to fill it with good gas. <laughs> So you got to put a fuel cell in it. So then you, but you can't open the trunk 
because that's, that's part of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the boat and part. you know, right. luckily there's no driver's seat, so we got a nice flat black fuel cell that goes right inside, and we didn't all we, we were able to just separate the carpet where there was a fold, and uh, there's the body, uh, you know, the body has access holes through it. Mm -hmm. So we were able to just run the lines through there. So we weren't, we didn't have to modify the car at all, which is good. It, it can be very easily returned to exactly the way it was when yep. Pippa made the car. That's exactly what we wanted. Yep. The steering is... It works. The car runs. It... Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> I think we need yeah. to, we have a picture of what the oh, steering yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like. Let's Put it right insert here. It's like yeah, feet right here. Long. I've right got, here. I've yeah, got many uh, feet of that. It's, it, it, that's the thing is it's, you know, the brake pedal is just a long bar with a spring <laughs> that goes from the back driver's seat there were no through brakes. where the front driver's seat was. Well, that's I'm just that's saying, not uh, the fault I'm of the design. Saying, from, from, you got a Flintstone. From is, the this, yeah. is this Maga is this a MacGyver situation? I no, it was done. <laughs> it was done. You know, I I think Peppa did a good job doing it. It's just you know, it's it's an artist building a car versus an engineer building sure, a car. That's... So it's these are very these are. Almost polar opposite uh, ends of the spectrum as to somebody who's designing a vehicle. Um, the perfect project for Ben. <laughs> it's, it, it, it was, it we're, was, we're like, oh, who can do this? Ben. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, How yeah, long well. did it take you to, to do the whole thing over? Well, it, only t it, it didn't take very long. It's just a question of, you know, as you go through the steps, I mean, we all knew it was going to need a carburetor rebuild, so you got to order a kit for it. Of course, yeah. the wrong kit comes in. Always. And then, you know, it's... <laughs> It was a cat and mouse thing for like a week. Like yeah. Ben would show up, parts aren't there. Okay, I gotta go home. Well, yeah, and that's basically what you do. What you, do. You, you just power through it. And then you finally get a couple of things sorted out. You do a test run with the car. And then, oh, wait, the thir you know the almost 40-year-old rubber, uh, you know, rubber uh, boots on the front wheel cylinder just disintegrate and the entire contents of the brake uh, uh the entire contents of the brakes hydraulic brake system empty through the front driver's side wheel well, so it's, it's you know it's good that that happened at car storage and not on David's well that's floor. the other thing is too is you need to you know you gotta that's the other thing is you gotta test it you gotta because yeah, on the day you've got ridiculously valuable cars of which this is probably the you know it, it's certainly not the least interesting in terms of monetary value it's probably low on yeah, that yeah. list but you know you still don't want you don't want to drive it into something right. you know you don't want to drive it into something more importantly you don't want to drive it into someone because yeah. cars we can replace people we cannot exactly you know uh yet yeah, I was going to say. Well, there's He's a, a Tesla guy. <laughs> oh, here we go. No. Well, there's cer certain cars in this room, maybe like that 904 over there. Like, we, we would have to be replaced before that. Oh, I would be, be Yeah, we'd be replaced. Jump in front of it so nothing happens yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. There is no car out there that's worth more than a person. And I, I, I and trust me. Have you I, ever had any crazy close calls on set like that? Yes. Anything you want to share? Then? No. Okay. <laughs> Noted. Please. No. NDAs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll. We'll talk. After. Maybe next time. Yeah, we'll talk but you know, it's you've got to be super cautious about everything. I mean, is this you know? So we we did the test run with the car, and we came up with more issues. And again, it's it's just a question of waking the car up. It's nothing. It's nothing crazy to do. So we got to do the water pump next. Big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. it's not that big a deal. It's you know the cool. I mean, you got to remember too is you're supposed to flush your coolant every what three or four years something like that, so it doesn't yeah, degrade it's your back engine. In this yeah. one's been in this. The coolant's been in there since the '80s. Yeah. So it's we're it's, moving this car, and I'm keeping an eye on the temp gauge. And Ben basically told me we got a few minutes to get this in before it overheats. So we get it in place, and then we go to tweak it. And David's kind of directing. I'm watching this coolant gauge rise, and it gets up to 280 degrees. Hold on, hold on, 280. hold on. 280. Uh, I don't know that how gauge. Old. That gauge does not function according I to, saw to according to the like laser. I freaked out. Yeah, <laughs> according to according to the We're laser. The boat car. <laughs> according Throw to the in. laser, it was 
a buck ninety nine. Oh, we're good. That's fine. No problem. Don't worry about it. it no. so, yeah, but it there's very, just no way to it modulate very, it. No, there's no way to modulate it, and there's no thermostat. In it. I have to pull the thermostat out. So that's the thing. It's cool. It's not flowing. As long as it's under two twenty, we're good. Don't worry. No problem. <laughs> yes, no but problem. at at two hundred, the the distance from two hundred to two twenty. Yeah. goes by like that. Oh, of course. I mean, well, it's like you got to shut it down before then because it's, it's going to keep going. Yeah. It's going to continue to heat up after you turned it off. I mean, if the water pump was functioning, I'd leave it running. Yeah. So the coolant flows, but yeah, it was it ceased to function. I how think, has Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was you're going to say how has that car been received? We get a lot we get a lot of great attention about it. It's one of the most car in there. One of the funniest questions we get is uh, does this thing float? <laughs> Sorry, regretfully no, but that would be a fun project. But I hope at some point we should have had a duck boat. We have a duck. Well, boat. we have a duck boat in the down, collection. Yeah, down it's in, in Virginia. Down in Virginia. It's it awesome. Really, yeah. <laughs> oh, it just broke I've never this man's it. heart. It's really cool. It's really cool. I got a machine gun for the hip, for the for the. <laughs> head head I'm just telling you right now. It's what like, I think, what I think, Narragansett is... Bay. <laughs> don't threat, don't are. threaten me. That would, that would be a good time. That would be an awesome. Does video it, does they have a Schwimmin wagon? I I yeah. don't. <laughs> no, because <laughs> no, no, we need a Schwimmin wagon too. I'm just saying. You, yeah. you know, you're talking about land write me yachts. An, write me an email. Okay, I'll write you an email. I think, you know, something that you know you, you talked about your first memories <clears> of seeing Ben at Cars and Coffee. I also have a similar memory of. Um, I don't remember. It, it, that is my core memory. Been clacking down something at the Something from polo World grounds. War II. Like, you're, you're, you're coming into the. Po- Maybe it was the same day. Yeah, you're coming polo. into the polo fields, and you are dressed to like the nines, and, like period, armor and a helmet. Dude, it looks like he's gonna. Like, you look shoot like, up. No, no, you can't say <laughs> that. I beg your pardon. He, he looks God, like, I beg your yeah, pardon. No, no, God. no, not yeah, good. We're editing that. Up. Dude, he's got that machine gun. You got there. like you have everything. Yeah, but they're 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 deactivated, and they just they shoot map gas, so it's. It's, it's it's all it's, it's, for it's film. all it's all movie props. Yeah, it's all movie props. But he it's not actually looks functional. like he's in the mu- movie. Well, if Fury you're gonna drive whatever. a World War you II half tractor did you bring that from Tiverton? Like, did you drive it? I trailered it to oh. right down the street and then oh, unloaded it down the street because yeah, it's, it's, it's still fair. It, I could not it's get over. It's one5 yeah. gallons per mile. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm not driving that from Tiverton. No. It would totally make oh, yeah. it. I no could way. not afford it. Wow. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> no right other now. way to say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no other way to say this. And I usually run all the antique cars on Avgas, so yeah. no. Yeah, no way. No, yeah, no, I see no, you no, coming no, down no. the road, and I was like ready to go like this. Yeah, right, but as that? you're coming in, it was yeah, that was really, really funny. Well, it was fun to drive. I think that was the first time I ever drove it on the road, too. That, I hadn't even done the brakes at that point, too. Scene. We must have footage of that. We gotta find. I it. Think we have pictures. There, did I have an exhaust sure. on that, or was it just straight pipes? All though? I could hear was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just hear the clanking of the of the rubber the tracks. tracks. Yeah, yeah, that was. Crazy. Literally, all you were missing was like an ammo vest. I yeah, mean, like I, can, are, I could, I could do it next time. The question is, what did we park you next to? Was it like a Ford Mustang? We, was it, we, yeah, you it was parked something... me next to a McLaren and an <laughs> yeah. E-Type. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. An Perfect. E-Type that's, Jag. That's like the beauty of cars and coffee, though. It's like the last cars and coffee we had at the Polo Fields. There was a Ford GT. Someone brought a fire truck. Yeah, so a, there was a fire so truck. So cool. But I think my favorite moment was the there was a new Ford GT, and then next to it was a like a modified Corolla, and then ne- on the other side was a 986 Boxster. It's like two twenty thousand dollar cars I, next to a million dollar yeah. car. It's nuts. It was a, that was a great event. I find it really funny when people will, you know, approach me or others at Cars and Coffee and say, "Wow, well, you know, I've got this Ford GT, for example. You know, yeah. why did you let this Corolla in here?" It's like, well, we don't care about what car yeah, you drive. Matter. Yeah, if it's, you come in with a vehicle yeah, that you cares? care about, it's like that's the best part. Yeah. And then you park next to the guy with the well, that, friggin' half. And that's the thing yeah. for me too. It's like I'm not. Uh, I love supercars. I'm not yeah. discounting supercars, but to me. That so, gets that my attention so cool. much more than that was it's so the stuff cool. that you don't see. I mean, yeah. like again, we're we're in the fortunate position where we get to see crazy cars, but there's a lot of stuff we haven't seen, and oh a lot of the God. stuff you have. And it's, um, it's yeah. one thing to look at cars and to work with cars, but it's another thing to be at Cars and Coffee and hear the clack, 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 yeah. and here comes a half track yeah. unexpectedly. Yeah. It's like a sensation you just can't make up. Half threatening, half. Oh my God, this is so cool. Or the Unimog, or the bus. Oh, well, we were saying before. Bus, yeah, so we were saying bus. before. Ben might have the most various cars and coffee entries like, oh, of all time. Oh, oh, oh like people yeah. bring great cars, and there's Easily. some collectors. Who, you know, there's been an F40, which was awesome, and that that same owner has a Senna, and that's great. Yeah. But yeah. no one has brought a Unimog and a 442, <laughs> and then a bus and a motorcycle. Oh, the bus was hilarious. Oh, you brought a bus. Oh my God! That was. That, tell us that? about that. Oh, yeah. When you, when you, you made that turn, that was close. 
When well, you yeah, it's a bus. <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't, you know. And going into the polo grounds. Is yeah, the I'm most... going into the polo. I don't know why I chose like, to sir, bring you're the, holding up the Yeah, traffic. I don't know why I brought the bus to the polo grounds. That was that was interesting. And I had no exhaust on it. That was just straight two stroke. That was, yeah, that really was loud. Uh, that was uh, that was obnoxiously loud. I uh, it's it's since then it's since then been more addressed. Sorted. <laughs> it's, we had flagged I, you. I'm not going to go as far. What? Yeah, we had flagged you. Ah, uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but no, that's a, that is a 1965 GMC fishbowl. It's the same model of bus they used in the movie Speed. Okay. okay. And uh, it's got a two str- it's got a two stroke so Detroit diesel gas. in it. It is <laughs> there is no gas gauge. Um, it simply has a hundred gallon tank underneath it, and you fill it. And there's literally the funny thing is when you fill it, there's a whistle. Okay. And when the whistle changes tone is when you know to stop filling it. Yeah. That's literally it. (laughs) That's all the information they give you on fuel consumption. Yeah, yeah. It's got a two-speed transmission. Okay. High and low, essentially. Yeah, uh, two slow and two high. Uh, Yeah, two slow and two fast. Well, actually, at (laughs) 49 miles an hour, there's such thing as too fast. But, uh, yeah, the bus is... uh, the, the bus is pretty off. My first word was bus. Yeah. So, growing up, like... You had to my, have one. I had to have Unimog? one. Yeah. Wow. It wasn't Unimog. No, my first word was Not bus. Schwimming what we need to do is... is we need to get the Wander Lodge next to your bus, because we have the... Oh, hell yeah. yeah that's, the, that's a... The that's Bluebird a hell of a, Wanda Lodge. It's yeah. getting restored currently, the interior. So cool. Why did that need to be restored? Uh, just need, it needed to be brought back to life a little bit, like oh, you okay. said. Freshened up. It, you know, it was sitting for, for, sitting for a while, yeah. and then just needed... Drives great, mechanically all yeah. done, and we're just getting... It's got a cat upgrades. diesel one, doesn't it? Uh, I believe it does, yeah. yeah. And big, thing, big six. And it Some is awesome. Monstrous, it's one of my favorite yeah. things that we have in uh, the collection. Everyone knows it as my bus. <laughs> nice. Um, He's a bus guy. But, uh, yeah, we got to get the buses gr- I've, together. I've been talking to a guy, Tom, who owns Trailways up in uh, Cranston. Mm-hmm. He's got a phenomenal bus collection. And I have been bugging him for years to bring some of his vintage buses down to Cars and Coffee. It just never works out. i got to call. I'm actually going to try. He's got the bus from West Side Story. Oh, that's okay. cool. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. It's called the New Look GM. Uh, I think it's a 48... It's a 48 or a 49. Um, two-tone green and yellowish green. Um, almost the same colors as the Swallow, actually. That's my favorite car. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that is a cool car. And uh, that that is a really cool bus. It's just, you know, buses are tough because it's a bus. Sure. They just... They don't. Yeah. Everything on it is difficult. <laughs> everything on it's heavy. <laughs> yeah. There's no power steering. There's no air conditioning. It's you can't absolutely see, you can't see, perfect. You can't see anything when yeah. you're driving. Well, yeah. <laughs> perfect. I'd love to get in front of... I, you know what I'd love to do is... This will anger many people. I just that that would be the type of day where I would show up with the bus and the entire Corvette Club would be behind me, <laughs> and I would never hear the end of it. This guy in the Corvette, I mean, bus, he's, he's rolling out cold. of the way. Yeah. What I think is absolutely hilarious is how you are pretty much fearless in my eyes when it comes to driving these vehicles, except for when it comes to motorcycles, because you and I have done the gentleman's ride a couple times. I remember the first time we did it together, uh, you were saying to me, please stay with me in the back because I'm really oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not a motorcycle guy. guy. I'm, I'm not a motorcycle really guy. I'm really nervous. Like, looking at you, you don't look like someone who'd be afraid of something. And you're, and you're on, you're, I think the first time was on a vintage BMW. Yeah, it's a, I brought that again this year. Yeah. And I thought mm-hmm. this year you had the sidecar. Last the year before you didn't. Oh, what a terrible idea that was! But, what, but having sidecar, or having the sidecar okay. was terrible. Okay. But I think that's so oh. funny how how you were saying you know please please stay with me. I I, I don't know. It's just a funny. Antonio, you've got a bike. You've got a bike that easily does two hundred. <laughs> two hundred. Close. There's no seatbelt. <laughs> There's no walls. There's barely a windshield. But that's what makes it fun. Well, and yours is okay. borderline more dangerous. Yeah, yeah yours Think is about way it. more no, dangerous nothing. than mine. He's got slip control, he's got wheelie everything. control, he's got traction go. control. He's got, he's got a trike. Calling, calling me a pansy. Now listen, man. always calling if me a If you use that stuff, that's your choice. But all he has oh, is like see? a clutch and a call brake. Call me a pansy. Listen, that is hey, true. let me tell you this right now. That Isoda Ficini, that Renault, I'll take those down the road any day of the week at, at full speed. Yeah, that's fine. Well, you you pro- during the you uh, proved that the car, uh, yeah, the, car the, better, yeah. the veteran cars were. Oh, that Pierce was great, man. Yeah. I tell you, the bridge was awful, but 
Dude, just we in were general. at an intersection during the veteran car tour, and you know we're flagging people down the road, and here come the group, and Ben is just you know a lot of people come to the intersection like look both ways, make sure <gasps> Ben like you know downshifts and just chugs up the hill like apex in the turn, forty miles an hour, and just shoots up. That was like, hey, a fun car to run. Oh, that was a great car to run. Yeah, that was a really great car. Pierce Arrow is just a phenomenal machine, and it's. You know, that, that, that specific car was set up for touring. You know, it was set up for, you know, doing miles. And yeah. uh, it, was a, it was a great pleasure that, you know, I was very lucky that Mr. Shappy would let me, uh, let me operate the machine for him, and I'm very thankful for mm -hmm. that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, That's you killed really it. Cool. You were moving. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's no point in going slow. Come and on. You, and, you didn't, and you didn't do any worse on the bridge than Ben and, and Matt Farah, so... Well, he That's pushed right. the damn thing over the hill. So there you go. I, at least we need I a clip. Get, I'm gonna get that clip in there too. That was oh, funny. Or the that picture, was, yeah, with I all the cars behind. Yeah. I can't believe that they got to the bridge and thought Dude, to themselves, oh, we're "Yeah, we're gonna gear. do that." I was right behind them, and I swear, at one point, the thing was gonna start rolling wow. backwards. We're talking two or three miles an hour on the Jeep digital dashboard. How how mad was everyone behind you? I mean, yeah, everyone was pissed, and you. Oh, yeah. The thing you about think that think about the, it. It's like this is a car that is 120 years old. Like have just an ounce piece. And piece. the thing about that bridge too, for those who don't know, it's a it's Mount a, Hope Bridge. Yeah, it's Mount Hope Bridge connecting Bristol to Aquinnick Island, and yeah. it's two lanes, traffic going both you know both ways. And the it was built in what 38. Some yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, one of the oldest. Ones. That, yeah. But the the sides of the bridge are low, so right. when you're sitting in that car. You're, you're looking over. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're looking you're over the side. well above the bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is not a pleasant experience. And I'll tell you, even on the Pierce, that was not a pleasant experience. And the Pierce was not as tall as that Packard. Yeah. And they were, they, they, they made it, but that, that, was, uh, that, was, that was sketchy. Is the word. I, I, you know, what's amazing is they did mile, because it wouldn't take any throttle because the main jet clogged right it was, it was, yeah yeah it was, basically. It was stuck in gear it was essentially idling not stuck in gear but it was in first gear and it yeah first like, gear wouldn't take any throttle whatsoever because yeah. it would die so you're idling a 120 year old car with, with one inside. cylinder this is yeah. one yeah. beefy cylinder but it's still just one with four guys in it and they did several miles to get to the bridge we're talking like at 12 that miles. rate yeah. yeah yeah and when it's they impressive. got there they said no, we're not going to stop at the bottom of this bridge and not go over this massive antique bridge, which is almost as old as the bloody car, okay? <laughs> they said, no, we're going to go over the bridge <laughs> with this very broken period correct car. The, the, it's not even that fast. The, the, it's just like the, chunk, 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 yeah. chunk, chunk, like on the verge of death. Yeah, literally. You know, literally. But and they then made it. But going up the bridge is one it. thing. Then you're going down the bridge. Yeah. In a car that, that basically that, has that very car, little control. Yeah, but and that car's got decent brakes, and the front end was tight, so it's gonna it's gonna get there okay. Uh, Matt Matt seemed nervous. Matt well, seemed Matt seemed nervous, nervous because nervous. he was at idle going over the Mount Hope Bridge, yeah. and, <laughs> and Ben Mercer's pushing the damn thing <laughs> up the bridge. <laughs> I'd be nervous too. That is, that is a core memory of mine. Yeah. <laughs> that was that oh was that was unbelievable. I just can't believe they made that. I think. You know, all of us have a vast knowledge of all automobiles, and I think that to uh, I think we're going to play a game. So oh boy. we're going to play a game, and we're going to have Sam, who's usually behind the camera, come and play us some uh -oh. car sounds, and we're going to guess what that engine sound is. But we're not going to just keep the results until he's done playing, just for audio, and then uh, we'll see who, oh, who gets it right. I'm going to get then, none of these. And then so, and then, I'm going to get every single one. I bet. No, I'm not going to. He knows what's. He coming. probably voiced. <laughs> yeah, he, he probably picked. Bah! Bah! <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say he picked the. He knows the list because he, he chose it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, no. I was gonna say. But, but what there, kind of quiz is this? There, there will be a prize at the end, and oh, by okay. a prize I mean I haven't come up with the prize yet. So oh, okay. we'll figure that right, out right. later. <laughs> so we'll take the black series around the building. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. That won't go over well. Or just play it from there. Try, try playing it from there and see what we'll, yeah, we can see hear. See if we can hear it first. I mean, you'll be able to hear it if it's loud. Watch there be advertisements. Oh. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> I know it yeah, is. Yeah, how is that easy? Maserati. Hell no. Can I guess? Oh, excuse me. GT, <laughs> like, excuse me. <laughs> Manifest. <laughs> it's a Carrera <Yeah>. GT. <laughs> uh, 
it's oh, not a God. career achievement. Sean wakes up in the morning like, oh, I had the best dream. Do it again, do it again. Do, yeah. Yeah, do it again. Oh, it's, oh, so it's, it's paddles. Is it a Ferrari? I'm going. Outside. Is it Italian? I think it's an Aventador. Oh, it could be. Could be uh, yeah, could be. But uh, Ferrari Enzo. No, it, it, so was you, do you uh, so do you we, call that you know, do you call that noise German or Italian? Because well, it's uh, a German, it's an Audi-made engine. Well, when you, when you when you said you want to uh, get technical with this. when you said Maserati before, and I scoffed at you, I forgot about the V12 Maserati, so I will take that back. Oh, see, I like, thought it was a way earlier car. No, no, I thought it was a way. I thought well, we were going to play really quick. All yeah, right, so, I think I all right, think it's so a, let, Enzo. I think it's an Aventador. Aventador. All right, sorry. Next Ford Pinto. <laughs> All right, Pinto. I, I like the sound of the Pinto. That might be a good idea. Yeah, fun Pinto. Frost. Yeah, it's a Porsche. It's, uh, I'll, I'll G- go German. GT3, maybe? It sounded like, it didn't you, sound you like guys, EDK. It sounded like you, a stick. 911R. You guys are going to know this way better than me. I mean, well, why are we playing real car sounds? We're going to. Okay. I, I'm sure Didn't you almost sure buy a Porsche it. recently? Yes. How'd that go? Really? I'm working on it. Okay. Are you going to get it? Same is it a tractor? No. Oh. Here we they go. They have a Porsche tractor. That's we what I'm know. saying. We cool. have a Porsche tractor. Do you? Yeah, we have a yeah. Virginia. Yeah, it's, it's so not cool. here. No, no we've already shown it. We it's so it again. cool. I love the Porsche oh, tractor. I love that. You got to mow along with that, baby. Hell yeah. All right, so a Porsche. You get German out of me. That's all you get. Go ahead. Yeah. Mercedes. I that don't. sounds like a GTR. That sounds like a Mercedes. I'm going new NSX. I don't even know. That I'm going like with weird. modern. Wait, do that again? Do that one again? No, I said I'm not with, it, not with a gear shift like that. Do you think maybe like a Turbo S? That, I'm, go, I'm it, going new the NSX. Idle, the idle sounds kind of the idle sounds kind of like Nissan GTR to me. All right, go for it. How many more we got? I don't know. Just a few. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Jaguar. Dude, I would say sounds kind of si- like a six-cylinder. Sounds like an old Jag to me. Could be. It kind of sounds like that. Do we get newer than that? It yeah. sounds sounds like that. It does, yeah. With the 150s. Yeah. Play it again, please. Of course. Ooh. She's like, uh oh, we're not recording. <laughs> it it, it kind of sounds like a V6 Alpha to me. Could bit. could be an Aston. Could be one of the six Astons. I'm going Could with be. the Jag. You want Jag? Jag. Jag you are. I'll go, I'll go British on that one. All right, next car sound. Performance shift. It's an old car. Yeah. Because he's yeah, double clutch. Yeah. That sounds, <laughs> that to me sounds like an XKSS. Jag. Really? Mm. I'm going Delahay. 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 Delahoo. Delahay. For, that, for that loud. French yeah, I think so. Really it was a nice like, slow progression in the RPMs. It wasn't shooting up. Like there. the 135. Yeah, but maybe. you're not going to do that with a Jaggy. I mean, you could do it with a Jag, but it's like that's an optional treatment right there. You can tell they're not going hard on that. No, no. I'm going Delahay. Like a 135, you think, Ben? What do you want me to change my answer? No, you don't have to change your I'm just surprised in, by your he's answer. He's in it for this prize that we don't know about. That's All right, yeah, fair yeah. enough. It's a very... I'm in it to win it. Okay, next. America! Is that a nasty 455. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it's a 427 straight pipe. Like a, uh, it could be a 426. It could be. It that doesn't. Sa- it didn't sound. Really. It didn't sound like a Ford. <laughs> it didn't sound like a Ford. Ben could really Next feel that. Next to Cubic Cube. 
Well, it's more likely to be a 426 Hemi. Is All it right. not? I don't know. Done a 427. Could be. All right, give us one more old one. Yeah, one more old one. Let's tally it up. That's a double, nasty. double clutch. That's also an open valve. You can hear in the exhaust or the open exhaust. Mm -hmm. Sounded like. I have. I, this is hard. It is really hard. Okay, Ben and I need to revert to the old guys for that one. <laughs> <laughs> ben and Shaw. <laughs> Bite again? It's not a Bentley. No. No, you'd hear. Not that high revving. That's cool. That sounds are so cool. That is interesting. Because it could, you could, that could be like a big Toyota Prius? No. Could be. Yeah, yeah, it could be a Prius. Yeah, okay. The one on Jay Leno's garage with a Hemi. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I mean, you could. I mean, I could. I could hear that being a touring car from, like, the '60s. Yeah. Yeah. You know I, that. I could, also, yeah, I also see that as like a pre-war going up the hill at Goodwood. It, it could be. Like, it sounded like Goodwood on the like the loudspeaker there. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, you got to make a guess though. Hmm. Lola. Well, Lola. Oh. We'll go what with was that. It? Why don't we all go yeah. with that? Collective. Lola. Yeah, what was it? What was it? Mercedes W25. Dude, I was going to guess a Mercedes. Oh. And then I was going to guess something else. Yeah, I was like, you oh, hear the super, line. Yeah. You hear the line. All right. Well, I couldn't tell if that wine was the previous car. It's That's like, what I thought. Though. I thought it was two cars yeah, it in the clip. Like two cars at first. It was an Aventador. Yep. Okay. Yep. Second one was a 991 GT3. Oh, it's just Okay. A what? Oh, the, oh, the, the new Yaris. Oh, I don't know. I'm never gonna ever get that ever. Uh, yeah, that's I, pretty cool. And you guys said that sounds like an XK120, so the next one was an XK120. <laughs> 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 XKSS, which I'll accept. Uh, so that's I got it. one. Yeah. Uh, nice. So we, yeah. Hmm. Then we're not good at this. No, apparently not. Apparently we're terrible. So I won. Yeah. Feels right. good, doesn't so it? Of course, Antonio, the producer of the show, wins. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. According to Donald, Ben Chester is the producer of the show. God. So. <laughs> All right. And, no. Yeah, and, and the prize that he didn't come up with yet, which he no, now no. gives to himself. So, yeah, yes. the yes. prize yourself. There's, so, there's, so, there's, there's the, more to yeah, this yeah, if the, you really look at the it. The show's rigged. No, 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 no. The Panigale V4R in the back, that'll, I'll take that as my yeah, prize. Right. Yeah, right. I'm going to the track Leave next week, so I'll take that. Are you actually? Yeah, I'm going to the track nice. next week. Fun. We can talk right, about that go. next episode. I'll talk about that next episode. So, uh, I think we had a lot of fun here today, guys. I really thank you enjoyed. for joining us. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, thank it's you, my pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much yeah, for having always, me. Always a pleasure. You know, and uh, I thank look you for forward. helping us out so much. No, it's my pleasure. It's, it. it's a good, you know, the Audrain's got a. Like I said, it's it's an excellent group of people. It's an excellent mission, and I'm happy to help. I'm happy yeah. to be here, and thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. So. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode of In the Driver's Seat with ABS. Remember to comment, like, subscribe. Uh, you can watch us here on YouTube, and you can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, um, and a whole bunch of others that I don't even remember, but we'll listen. Apple, we're on Apple now. Yeah, Apple too, which, is, which I'm excited about. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>